Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host for the show, David Blaine. So we enter our third segment here today. Uh, if you missed the first couple of segments, we invite you to uh, visit us on the web at www.dlblaine.com. There you'll find information uh, about myself, my firm, as well as archived copies of the show. Uh, in the last segment, we're talking a little bit about President Obama's uh, new job bill, and in my opinion, it's just sort of more of the same that um, it, from the stimulus and even way back to President Bush, the making work pay credit, um, this couple hundred dollars um, spread broadly across the economy is just not creating jobs. Um, there are a couple of troubling um, proposals in the president's job bill, and like most things coming out of uh, politicians, not just President Obama, but um, the other side of the aisle too, a lot of proposals, but not a lot of details. And so as details on this emerge over the next several weeks, um, may provide some clarification. But as we sit here now, one of the proposals in this job bill is to limit the amount of uh, municipal bond interest that is tax deductible for high income payers. And of course, they are the ones that receive the most benefit. When an investor decides to invest in a municipal bond, a state, county, or city bond that they, they issue bonds to the general public to raise money for you know, schools, hospitals, roads, things like that, uh, if, they don't have, if they don't want to raise the taxes on their property uh, tax base, they can go to the public markets and say, well, we like to sell this bond, and investors give them their money and in return, the county or state promises to pay a state of rate of interest. Well, that interest is currently tax-free from federal tax. So if you earn, if you invest in a municipal bond that's paying, you know, 2% interest, well, that 2% interest you earn is free of federal tax. Well, part of this jobs bill is for the higher income taxpayers to eliminate or reduce that deduction. Now, first of all, the only people that should be investing in municipal bonds are people in a higher tax bracket. Because when you invest in municipal bond, you accept a lower rate of return versus a corporate bond. So let's say there's a corporate bond that's paying 4% rate of return taxable, and the municipal bond is paying 2% rate of return, but it's tax-free. If you're in the lowest tax bracket, 10%, you should not be investing in municipal bond because after tax, that corporate bond, you're going to keep more money in your pocket. So the only tax bracket really that makes sense in general for investors is people in the higher tax bracket. So let's get that out of the way. First of all, that by um, the, the only people that really should be investing in municipal bonds is the people in the higher tax brackets. And by proposing to reduce the tax break for people in these brackets to invest in municipal bonds, they're going to put a certain segment of people that typically invest in municipal bonds into a position where if they do the math, it no longer makes sense to do. And so what is the impact on that? Um, a couple of things. Number one, part of the funding for your state, local governments is going to go away. And, and I'm not sure that, you know, at this point, in history and the recession and things that that's what we want to do. Uh, more importantly, it's going to force state and local governments to raise their interest rates that they offer. Because the tax break will not be so great, as I mentioned, there's going to be a certain segment of the population that now when they do the math on municipal versus taxable, you know, a corporate bond, that the, their financial advisor or if they do it themselves, they're going to say, well, you know, at this juncture, we don't think it's worthwhile for you to invest in municipal bonds anymore because on an after-tax basis, you'd be better going over here and giving, you know, Coca-Cola or Walmart your money, paying the tax, and at the end of the day, you have more money in your pocket. So what the, the mechanism of that then is when the state and local governments go to the capital markets to raise money, they're going to have to offer higher interest rates to attract the same capital. And so we don't think that's such a great idea. Um, the other thing I want to cover, once again, there's not a lot of information on the specifics of that um, 
it's a jobs plan and the president does not write legislation and so a lot of that has to get worked out in the congressional committees. The other thing that's in this proposal is limiting for the same high income taxpayers their charitable giving deductions. Once again, America is a very generous country and people of every tax bracket give, uh, give very generously to charitable organizations. But the reality is, is that as you creep up the tax bracket into the you know, 28%, 35% tax bracket, every dollar that they give to charity means a lot more in terms of tax deduction. And my big concern is, once again, in an economic time like this when state and local government uh, resources are stressed, private charity resources are, are um, stressed. I serve on a charity that serves the 54 counties of eastern North Carolina uh, charitably and I was at a board meeting this weekend talking about how in recessionary times the demand for charitable services goes up. The demand for government services goes up at a time when people are hurting the most and by tinkering with the charitable giving formula as this jobs bill proposed by President Obama, I'm just not sure that's a great idea right now. Um, as you've probably heard on the show, I am for simplification of the tax code and as an ultimate goal, I would love to see, you know, get away from the municipal bond interest, get away from deductions for charity, <coughs> any special interest, home mortgages, and go to some sort of flat or fair tax in the long term. It's just that today as we sit here, I'm not sure that tinkering with the charitable giving formula or the municipal bond interest formula is the greatest thing to do. Um, in recessionary times, the pressure put on state and local governments, the pressure put on charitable organizations that give you know, food and aid and counseling to people that are losing their jobs and things like that, the demand for those services go up. And I'm just not sure that we want to be doing that right now, uh, possibly um, messing with their uh, revenue streams. Uh, but anyway, that's my, my two cents on the jobs bill. Okay, well, we've only got about 30 seconds left, so uh, we'll have to wait till next week. I do want to get into talking about some of the long-term implications of the market and what is the volatility we've been uh, experiencing lately mean for the long-term investor. And the punchline, you need to come back next week, but the punchline is that I think uh, the next few years will be much better. So for all things money, I'm your host, David Blaine, and we hope that you will join us again next week. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.